My name is Naomi. Hi. I'm your behavioral health counselor today. Okay. Would you prefer to go by Patricia? That's fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm here um, to talk about your smoking habits today, if that's okay with you. Okay, yes. And could you tell me a little bit about your smoking habits? My smoking habits? Um, well, I, I smoke probably between a pack and a half to a pack a day. All right, and could you just tell me about how this influences your life a little bit? Describe why you're here and would like to talk about it today. Okay, well, a couple of reasons. Um, I'm a swimmer. I swim for exercise about two or three times a week usually, and um, anywhere from 20 minutes to a half an hour. And I've noticed um, the last few weeks that I'm experiencing some shortness of breath when I swim. So I've gotten out of the pool early or else I haven't even gone in on a couple of occasions. So that concerns me. And then um, I take care of my little grandson on the weekends and he was recently hospitalized with an asthma attack. And of course his physician does not want him around smoke, even secondhand smoke. And so that really got my attention. I felt terrible and, and so I thought this is a good time to really think about giving up smoking. So you're really worried that this might influence your grandson's um, health as well as your own? Right, right. And do you see it influencing any other part of your life or mostly just the swimming and your weekends with your grandson? Well, I, you know, just overall health. Um, you know, I don't want to have any respiratory problems and um, I've had pneumonia in the past. And so I, I would just say, you know, the overall health. I mean, I, I hate the smell of it on my clothes, and um, that's another reason why I'd like to give it up. So, yeah, but, but mostly I would say the main reasons would be my health and my grandson's health. So you mentioned that you'd like to give it up. Have you had any experience trying to quit smoking before? I have, actually. Um, I've tried three times altogether to quit. And could you tell me a little bit more about those times? Well, I failed miserably. Um, the first time I quit was when my children were still at home, um, younger, like teenagers, and they were bugging me to give up smoking. So I tried, and again, I couldn't do it, failed miserably. The second time um, was when I turned 50. I thought it would be a nice way to start a new decade. S encountered the same problems as the first time. Um, and then the third and final time I tried a couple years ago, um, I was probably often the longest, and I did try um, Nicorette gum. So I don't know if that's why I was often the longest or not, but I hated the taste of the gum. It's kind of a peppery taste, and I just not a gum chewer normally, so I, I didn't like that. So it sounds like family is a really big motivator in your attempts to quit smoking. You said your children helped you, now your grandson's helping you. Are there some other things that you think really help you in attempting to quit smoking? Um, well, no, I think again, overall, like I said, my health, my grandson's health, um, the cost of cigarettes is getting very expensive. That's another good reason why I'd like to give it up. So. On maybe an important scale here, you've mentioned that it's really important to you. On a scale of zero to 10, how important would you say quitting smoking is to you? Mm, gosh, that's a good question. I would say probably seven or eight. Okay, so that's a pretty high number, which is a good thing for us. But So why would you say it's not a lower number? Because again, you know, it's, it's taken on much more importance, especially with this latest incident with my grandson. I just don't ever want to see him go through that again. I was there when he had the asthma attack and it was pretty frightening, so. And in terms of your confidence, you said you've tried three times before. How confident would you say you are that in attempting a fourth time you might be able to make some changes? Hmm. Well, if I'm honest, based on my past failures, um, gosh, I would say probably like a three or four. Okay. 
So it's not a zero, so that's a good thing. Where do you see the confidence coming from? Why is it a three or four, would you say? And not a zero? Yeah. I guess because I was able to stay off them um, in my last attempt for a couple of weeks. So I guess I would count that as a little bit of success. That's a good step. And you said gum was a large part or maybe a small part in helping you yeah. succeed. So have you tried any other types of... Um, nicotine replacements or any sort of medication? No, no, well, no. Like I said, the first two times were just cold turkey. I didn't try anything. And then the last time was the only time I tried something, but I'm not even sure whether that was what helped me or not. Okay, so sometimes um, in helping to create a behavior change in your life, it's helpful to kind of relate it to some values that influence your daily life. Okay. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a look at these values here and seeing if any of them stick out to you in terms of really influencing your daily life. Wow, well, a lot of them are important. Um, I guess being a good parent slash good grandparent, that's very important. I want to be a good role model to not only my adult children, but to my grandson as he gets older. He's only four right now. Um, I see myself normally as a confident or competent person. Um, I don't like the fact that, that it's like the cigarettes are ruling me and I, I don't have any control over the cigarettes. And so I, that would be another one would be in control. I feel like I, I usually have pretty well control over most things in my life that I can control. Um, and so I, you know, and, and whatever I tackle, I'm pretty confident because I give it my all. So those would be things that stood out to me the most, I would say. Okay, so you talk about being a good parent, being in control, and being competent in your daily life. And smoking is really making you feel trapped and really disappointed that you're not being able to fill those aspects of those values in your life. Oh boy, yes, you get it. Yes, it just, it's so frustrating. It just makes me so mad that I can't do it on my own. Do you feel that you have some individuals in your life who could help you with this at the time? You haven't mentioned a significant other or um, do you feel that you have some resources? That you uh, have well, resources? my husband definitely uh, would love to see me quit. He knows I'm here today. If I were to tell him I was quitting cold turkey, he probably would have his bags packed because I was very irritable to be around. Um, but no, I think he would be very supportive. Um, I do have coworkers I smoke with as well. Um, I don't know if, how supportive they're going to be. Nobody, unfortunately, has talked about giving it up at work, so I'd have to do it on my own at work, but I think they would be supportive of me. So in terms of when you talked about your confidence in being able to quit, and you'd really like to be competent and really in control of your life. So thinking forward, um, what are some little steps and changes that you think you might be able to make? That's that's the big question of the day. I don't know. I guess that's where I get stuck. I just, you know, I'm, I'm able to occasionally get down to one pack, but then I just, I can't get beyond that. I don't know what to do or how to go about it. So in the past, for some patients, um, some of the nicotine replacement pills, such as Zyban or Xanthrix, have worked really well for patients. Um, do you think you might be willing to consider some of those options? Um, you said Zyban yeah. or Chantix. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I, you know, I know that there's options out there. I just don't know anything about them. I, I guess that would be hard for me to, to specifically choose one when I don't know anything about it and how it works. And I guess I need to know side effects and the cost. That's the competent person in me. I have to know all the, the you know, avenues of what it is I'm taking on before I can make a decision. So in terms of these medications, most of them help address cravings and really the pleasure that comes from smoking. So it would help you reduce it in kind of situations where you aren't feeling as much pressure. Um, and assuming that it's covered by your health insurance, is that something you think you might be willing to consider? Or would you be interested in trying some other 
um, avenues like the patch or an inhaler or spray. They even have some nicotine lozenges that oh, can wow. help as well. So there's a lot of options. A lot of options. I didn't realize there were so many options. I guess I might be willing to try them down the road. I think for me, because I like to get all my ducks in the row before I make a decision, might be a good starting point for me might be learning more about them, you know, mm-hmm. reading, reading up on them. And I have some websites and stuff that have a lot of information about each of these drugs so that you could um, look at each of them individually and carefully on your own time and consider how these might influence your daily activities. Okay. Is that something you might be interested in? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's a good starting point for me Um, because I, you know, I hate to make a decision when I don't really know anything about them. Right. And um, so looking in addition to potentially some other medication things in your lifestyle, you said your coworkers kind of smoke and maybe encourage you to smoke. Um, do you see that there's generally um, a certain time or a setting that encourages the smoking at the office? Um, well, when we, the smokers there take breaks and we go outside because we're not allowed to smoke in the building. So. Um, that's typically when we smoke together. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm going to have to go to another. There are rooms that people go to that are non-smokers and catch up on all the gossip and stuff like that. So I guess I could catch up on the gossip. <laughs> and in terms of your home life, since that seems to be where smoking has really been the issue for you, do you smoke in the home or what types of things kind of spark the desire to have a cigarette? Oh boy, I, I um, do smoke in the home, but um, you know, usually when my husband's not there, our children are gone and raised and on their own. Um, but yeah, I find that when I'm a, I'm having a particularly stressful day, I do smoke more times like that. Um, I definitely uh, that contributes to it. So it's a stress relief mm-hmm. for you in terms of smoking. In your experience, are there some other things that you think you might be able to do to relieve stress or? Yeah, if I, you know, if I get this smoking under control, um, I find that my swimming is a, is, is a good stress reliever. Um, so, I mean, that's gonna take a while, I think, before I notice improvement in my, my breathing. But um, I don't know, I, I mean, the weather's starting, hopefully turning nice. so. Maybe I could start taking some walks. Okay, so that's good. So you have you like to walk, you like to swim, and really kind of improve your health, and that helps to be a good parent or grandparent in this case. Um, you want to be healthy for a long period of time so that you can chase your little grandson around right. um, and keep up with him and really enjoy his activity. Right. Yeah, he's, he's active, that's for sure. Yeah, that would give me more, like you say, more energy, and um, so I, I definitely look forward to all those benefits when I finally do give up smoking. But I, I just, I know I want to take it slowly and not jump into it too quickly. So I think that's why that's a good start for me, is to, um, you know, to start reading up on all this information and then uh, maybe start incorporating some walks to uh, help with my stress, that would be a good beginning. All right, so just to look at the scenario here in terms of summarizing it, right now your smoking is really causing you to feel trapped within yourself and really is letting you down in terms of your ability to feel like you're a good grandparent and you're competent and in control of your life. Um, And you'd really like to be able to swim and relieve stress that way without feeling like it's really impinging on your health um, because you said you're having some trouble breathing. And then you have your grandson who's a really strong motivator for you in um, all of this. So you'd like to stay healthy and be active so that you can really enjoy your time with him. Right. So is there anything else that you'd really like to focus on outside of that summary that I just gave? Um, No, I just think, you know, going forward that I, you know, um, once I come up with, um, you know, which one of these that I feel is, again, most conducive to my work environment, I'm in meetings a lot during the day. So what, whichever one of these aids I choose has to be something that I feel 
I can do um, without, you know, like an, I think you said there's an inhaler. That's mm-hmm. probably not going to be a first choice. Um, but And then trying to come up with some ideas on how to change my behaviors because there's certain things that I do that where I automatically smoke during the day. Could you talk a little bit more about those behaviors to say that automatically makes you? Oh gosh, I mean, first thing when I get up in the morning, I smoke. Um, after meals, I always smoke. When I'm driving or talking on the phone, I mean, you don't even think about it. It's such a habit, you just automatically smoke. So I know I'm gonna have to um, replace those behaviors eventually. And do you think that there's maybe one of those that you think you might want to focus on just as a first step? First step. Um, to maybe addressing, reducing your cigarette usage along with some other of the options. Yeah, maybe that's a, maybe that's not a bad idea. Um, maybe when I'm driving, I don't have that long of a drive to work. Maybe uh, substitute instead of having cigarettes in my car and maybe taking something else. I, I do worry about gaining weight, so I won't take candy or, you know, maybe something, some nuts or something to chew on. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, so, I mean, because it sounds like from the behaviors you were saying really connect with smoking, it's some it's an activity to do, you know, while you're talking on the phone, while you're driving. Right. It's something to do with your hands. So it sounds like if we can find something else like the nuts or even maybe some other small item that you can occupy your hands with, that that might be a good avenue to choose. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, I think that's actually a pretty good idea because I know with all these behaviors during the course of the day, I'm gonna to have to replace them with something. So. so in terms of all the things that we've discussed, you said you've been really, you'd be really interested in looking up some of the medications that are helpful, but also aside from medications, it sounds like there's some small changes that you can make in your life to just help with reducing the number of cigarettes you are smoking each day and really move towards um, not cold turkey as you said but really move slowly towards reducing your cigarette usage so that you feel in control of your life again right and feel that you can you know shift your energy towards um, spending time with your grandson rather than focusing on the stress that smoking is causing in your life yeah yeah I definitely uh, I think you have a good picture of what, of what I'm going through and what I need to do, and yeah, I, it's going to make me feel, um, you know, definitely prouder of myself that I can conquer this. Because that, you know, especially when you try it and you fail, and you try it and you fail, and you just, you know, it's so discouraging and frustrating. Yeah, so it's really important then that we take this slow and so that you can see your successes on an incremental level and really move towards that change in a positive way. Okay. So thinking about it, how on a scale of zero to ten, maybe how hopeful are you that after you leave this session today, you could maybe start to think about those changes, like you said, maybe think about the medication options or think about something to replace a cigarette at one of the points in your day? Well, I definitely, my confidence level is a lot higher than when I came in because I feel like it's a start. I know what I'm supposed to do to start the process. It's something that I feel I can do. It's something I feel I can achieve, feel I can achieve. Um, So I feel pretty confident. And which of these things do you think might be the first thing that you'd like to focus on as you leave here? Um, definitely reading up on the information that you're going to provide for me, definitely. And then um, start trying to walk at night. I guess we're supposed to get some storms in the next couple of days, so it won't be probably this yeah. couple of days, but maybe after work when the weather's nice, start incorporating walking and try not to focus on the cigarettes. All right, well, that sounds like a really good plan um, leaving here. Is there any other question or something you'd like to ask me? No, I can't think of anything. No, I think we've covered it all. All right. Well, I um, I thank you for your time. I hope that this can, you can leave here today and really feel good about making a small change, um, because I think you will be able to regain that confidence and 
um, control of your life that you're seeking. I, I hope so. And I'm glad that I'm going to have your help. I think that will make a difference. Yes, I'll be here cheering you on and hopefully you're providing any guidance that you might need. Okay, thank you. So. Hi. You're <laughs> Naomi? Yes. Naomi, I'm really Diane. I'm not.